Welcome back. Now, ants are known for their impressive ability to find their way home, but new research shows they could be even better navigators than previously thought. Scientists say they can follow a compass direction regardless of the direction in which they're actually facing. That's the equivalent of trying to find your way home while walking backwards or even spinning round and round. It's absolutely fascinating, this story, so let's talk more with BBC Science correspondent Helen Briggs, who's here with me. I love this story. It's my favourite story of the day. I mean, they've always stood out uh, in terms of being brilliant at navigation, but this, this is fascinating. Just tell me, what, what is it that researchers have found they're doing? Well, they're using two things. So they can tell the direction from the sun, so the sun is their compass, and they can also use visual information uh, and their memories about their surroundings, and they can put them together to have this amazing ability. So what they do is they go off, they get food, and they drag it backwards, and they can carry things 20 times heavier than them. So they get all this food drag it back to their nest and they're going backwards. So they have to use this complex way of navigating. Uh, they're much better than us at doing this, so it is just like trying to find directions with no sat-nav, with no map, with not being able to see where you're going and someone spinning you around and telling you to do it backwards. It's astonishing, isn't it? it is. And with the obvious thing, their brains are tiny, and yet they can do all of those things. Yeah, their brains are smaller than a pinhead, uh, but the scientists say, well, it's not actually the size of your brain, it's what is inside. So they're trying to get clues from an insect brain, from an ant brain. They're looking at how that brain is put together, how it's modelled. And how did they actually work all of this out, the scientists themselves? I mean, how did they do it? Well, they did experiments in, in, with desert ants in Spain, and they made a little obstacle course for them, and then they tried to confuse them with the mirrors so that they wouldn't be able to use the Sun as a compass with a mirror uh, and then they found that that um, they needed both the Sun um, and they needed some sort of visual information to actually be able to do this backwards um, so it's a step further uh, in terms of science in terms of what the ant is capable of a step further and a step backwards uh, in step all backwards. in one but in terms of going backwards uh, how far can they actually travel backwards whilst doing all of this extraordinary navigation? Well, they travel hundreds of metres, so they've got tiny nests, they go hundreds of metres away, they never get lost, and they're pulling things like, um, for, if you imagine a, a tiny ant pulling something like a bee or an earwig backwards, they're pulling it back to the nest, um, to, to the colony, so they pull it along and then they just stop, drop the food, have a little peek over their shoulder, um, sort of set their, their own little ant GPS, if you like, and go off back to their nest. I mean, it is interesting research, but I suppose practical uses, that, that is the reason, essentially, to do something like this. And there are practical uses of information they've learned from this. What, what are they? Well, what they're looking at, so say if you've got self-driving cars, you've got masses of technology on a self-driving car, you've got loads of cameras, you've got all sorts of technology, but ants are doing it, the similar sort of thing with a tiny brain. So what they want to use the ant brain as a model to kind of miniaturise this technology and try and make it cheaper so you can get lots of small cheaper robots that could navigate say in forests and farmland countryside at a fraction of the price of of something like a driverless car well helen absolutely fascinating talking it through thank you so much for coming in and explaining well uh, that's just about it from us for this week stay with us on bbc world news for focus on africa their lead story of course the swearing in of Gambia's new President Adama Barrow in the embassy in Senegal. We were looking at those pictures only a short while ago. But thanks for watching again. See you next week. Bye bye. Hello there.